Hey guys, this is Valentina Palladino for Ars Technica and today we're going to be talking about fitness earbuds. All of these that I got here. So these are fitness earbuds not only because they're mostly sweat proof, but all of them have heart rate monitors in them. And they're meant to track your workouts while letting you listen to music. Until now, really you've only had the option of putting a chest strap across your chest to measure your heart rate or wear one of those fitness trackers that has an optical heart rate monitor built in. But now, these I wouldn't say are getting popular, however, manufacturers are starting to make them more. Fitness earbuds that can some track your activity, but all of them would track your heart rate. And they connect to some kind of connected mobile app that can help you track exercise, all that kind of stuff. There are some reasons why the ear can be a good place to measure your heart rate. The earbud doesn't really have a lot of room to move, and movement is an enemy of accurate heart rate tracking. That's why a lot of the wrist-based heart rate monitors, if you wear them too loosely, they're not going to be very accurate. And another reason is that the ear is a very good pressure point. There's not a lot of flesh in between the heart rate monitor and the blood flow that goes through your ears. So you can get a pretty good reading when you're using a heart rate monitor that is meant to be placed in your ear. However, just because that is a pretty good place doesn't mean that it's very easy to make these heart rate monitors. A lot of the challenges that you know, manufacturers face is that you know, everybody's ear is a little bit different. It's gonna be shaped differently for everybody. So that can be really hard to get a good fit. That's why most of these and regular earbuds will have different ear wings and different bud tips that you can you know, adjust and swap out so you can get the best fit for your ears. You know, comfort is subjective to everybody and that goes along with the fit issue, right? So manufacturers have to make something that is comfortable for you to wear, not just when you're listening to music like a regular earbud, but also when you're working out, when you're moving, when you're constantly kind of moving your body. So that can be really hard, especially when you need to wear these earbuds to track your activity for 30 minutes or more and wear them all day. But more and more of them are coming out. So I spent some time with a few of them, some of the newest ones that have come out, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I like them and what some issues were with some of them. So these are the $200 Bose Sound Sport Pulse earbuds. And these are Bose's ones that track your heart rate. And as you can see, the backs of these are pretty big. Overall, this design is very similar, and you'll see them in the other earbuds that they kind of have this larger back where the sensor is going to sit, or the sensor's right here actually, but these are like, it has the technology built into it. And then you have your regular buds and your, your ear wings right here. And these are removable. Pretty much all of them have these removable tips and ear wings, and that's meant for you to get the right fit. Probably the best thing about these Bose ones is that they have probably the best sound out of all the ones I've tested. It's pretty balanced, it has a really good bass, you know, for when you need to get really pumped up for a workout but it's not overpowering bass. It doesn't you know, forget about the rest of the sounds in there when you're listening to music. But one of the bad things about it is that the heart rate monitor, in my experience, really wasn't that accurate. A lot of the times it would be super low. It would read my heart rate as super, super low, even when I was in the middle of a workout. And you can only really see the heart rate in the Bose app that you can connect these to although it does connect to a bunch of third-party apps and you can use those like Endomondo to track your workout and you'll get kind of a, at least in Endomondo, you'll get a kind of scale of what your average heart rate was during a workout, your lowest and your highest, that kind of thing. But if you want a real-time heart rate reading, you go into the Bose app and it was, it was pretty slow to even catch up to like a fraction of what the Apple Watch was telling me that my heart rate was at the time. So, I mean, it was a difference of at least 50 uh, beats per minute, so that was pretty off. Also, these are not very heavy, so that's a good thing. However, the backs are very large. So when you put them in your ears and you're moving around a lot, say you're on a treadmill or on the elliptical or just running outside, these, they tend to kind of bounce, so they'll kind of move a little bit more than the other buds have in my experience. So that will lead to, at least it led to me, adjusting them a lot, and that's not really good if you want to get the most accurate heart rate reading as possible. So here we have Jabra's $160 Sport Pulse Special Edition. Special Edition just means that it's the newest version of the Sport Pulse. Jabra has made plenty of fitness earbuds in the past, probably the most out of any company. And these are pretty good. As you can see, the ear wings here um, are much thinner, pretty much the thinnest out of all of them. And again, they can be removed as can these little earbuds, the tips here. 
And the good thing about that thinness of the ear wings is that they're really, really comfortable. At least for me, they are. If they're too thick, they kind of can make my ears a little bit sore after wearing them for over 30 minutes. But these are extremely comfortable. But as with all of them, anyone, if you end up buying any of these or going on purchasing a wireless earbud set like this, you want to go through every single ear wing and every single tip that they come with to make sure that, that you get the best fit for your ears. The bad thing about this is that the sound is not the best. Kind of everything kind of jumbles together and there's no definition in the sound. It's not the worst pair of earbuds you could get, but it's definitely not the best out of the group. The heart rate monitor on these earbuds is okay. It took a while to catch up to the Apple Watch's reading, but once it did, it was always within about 5 BPM, but it was a little bit slow for my liking. Another good thing about this is that Jabra has a really, really great sport app to go along with this. It's the Sport Life Life app, and you can track a bunch of different activities from this. If you have certain Jabra headsets, you can even track different types of circuit workouts. And it's, it's a really good coaching app as well. So I'd say, you know, when, when audio companies make these fitness earbuds, a lot of the time they either rely on third-party apps or try to make their own and it's not that great. But Jabra already has a really, really good support app to go along with this. So you don't have to worry about finding a third-party app if you don't want to. These ones are the $200 Under Armour Sport Wireless Earbuds created by JBL. Under Armour kind of partnered with JBL so the JBL can bring their audio expertise in and Under Armour can bring their fitness expertise in to make these wireless buds for fitness. So some good things about this is that the heart rate monitor is very accurate. I'd say it's probably the most accurate out of all of them. There were maybe one or two occasions where it was probably like 15 BPM off of the Apple Watch, but that did not last very long. It was very good at tracking my heart rate, even at high BPM, so I was very happy to see that. And also Under Armour, similarly to Jabra, has a really good fitness app to go along with this. It's Under Armour Record. And that is also used in other Under Armour connected devices. So anything that you could track with another Under Armour device, you could track with these if you want to track heart rate. So I really enjoy that app. There's a lot of options for you there. The bad things I could say about this is that the design may not be for everyone. I know that having these over the ear type of hooks can be kind of uncomfortable sometimes if you're not used to them. I know that they were for me when I first started wearing these types of earbuds, but once you get used to it, they're okay. Other than that slight mess up with the heart rate monitor every once in a while, I can't really say anything too bad about these. So overall, these are pretty good for what they promise to do, even though all of these at $200 are a little bit on the expensive side. So these last ones are the $200 Samsung Gear Icon X. These are fully wireless buds. These are very similar to the Braggy Dash earbuds that have been making news recently. Some of the really good things about this is that they are truly wireless. There's no wire connecting both of them. You just put them both in either ear and you kind of go along your way. They're very, very comfortable. What I really like about them is this kind of the ear wing here, which is removable, is this little like kind of loop thing. And this makes it really comfortable to kind of stick in your ear. It's not going to make your ear sore. And it also is really secure. I've never had these fall out on me. And I was a little bit worried about that when I first started with these because I wasn't sure how that would work without a wire connecting them. So I was very pleasantly surprised to see that these were very comfortable and very secure. The heart rate monitor is also pretty good. It was always within about 5 BPM of the Apple Watch, sometimes being almost exactly the same as the Apple Watch. So very happy to see that. One of the bad things is, is that these are only available for Android phones. I believe it's Android 4.4 and up can use these earbuds. You can't get them, you can't use them if you have an iPhone. So that's really unfortunate. And the other thing is, is that this is a charging case and it kind of needs this because these will get about three hours on a single charge, which is shorter than all of the rest of the earbuds that I tried out. Usually last around five hours on a single charge. And if you're just using them for, to track workouts, you could get around five days or a week out of them before you need to charge them. These only last about three hours and the case itself can charge them two times over. So add another six hours to that. But you will have to charge these things probably at least once every two days, depending on how active you are. Another thing I should mention on this is that there is four gigabytes of storage on these earbuds. So you can put music on these and go running without having your phone on you. So that's a really nice perk. So overall, my experience testing out all of these fitness earbuds was a positive one, I'd say. Overall, I am cautiously optimistic about the future because most of these audio companies are just now starting to make these devices. They're still kind of hit or miss, but 
they're getting much better. I tested them all with the Apple Watch Series 2 because the heart rate monitor in that is very accurate, at least in my experience it has been. At least half of them were very close, if not the same thing, as the Apple Watch in their measurements. Most of them are still a little slow to get up to like the, those high BPMs with their heart rate monitors, but hopefully in the future the, you know, the technology will be a little bit more refined, a little bit better across the board, so that at least the technology that you're using will be the most accurate as possible. On the flip side, as a user, you're going to have to make sure that you get the best fit if you were to buy one of these. And that means taking the time to go through the ear wings, to go through the bud tips, and to see how you can get the best fit without making your ears sore if you're going to wear them for a long period of time. Would I buy one of these right now? Probably not. I still think all of them are a little bit too expensive for me. The Jabra one is the least expensive at $160, but the rest of them are $200. That is the same price as some of the high-end fitness trackers that you can get that do heart rate monitoring, uh, so much more fitness tracking. They have better apps to go along with it. Some of them have built-in GPSs, so there's a lot more functionality that you could get with a wristband heart rate monitor within a fitness tracker than you could with these earbuds. Out of the ones that I tried, I really like the Under Armour ones and I really like the Jabra ones. They have the best combination of audio and accurate heart rate and a very good fitness app to go along with them. So it's kind of this all-in-one package and you don't really have to go searching for another thing in terms of a third-party app. So I would say if you want to try one, I would go with one of those. If you're an Android user, the Samsung ones are pretty good, but that's still really limiting if you don't have an Android phone or if you want to get a different phone in the future. So I would say probably wait a little bit longer. Hopefully the prices will come down on these in the next year or so. And hopefully more audio companies will be making them and there'll be a little bit more choice for you.